This is the most excited about sculpting I've been since I started sculpting. Back in 2014, I tried ZBrush for the first time and I instantly fell in love with it. It's all I could think about and it's all I did whenever I had the chance. I had this burning passion to get good at it and I achieved some success with it too. The company behind ZBrush published my work in a magazine and I even went on to live stream for them on YouTube and Twitch. But I left that behind for Blender. And a lot of people at the time thought I was insane because Blender in many ways is less capable than ZBrush for sculpting. But there's this one thing that Blender can do that ZBrush can't which played a huge part in my decision to switch. And that thing is the ability to work with multiple views. Because now I could see what I was doing and I wasn't constrained by only one viewpoint. If I made a change to the front view I could simultaneously see what effect that had on a three quarters and a side view. However, now I feel as though I've hit another turning point because with Shape Lab, now I can really see what I'm doing. Now don't get me wrong, I love my graphics tablet and I still love sculpting with it, but it will always be constrained to two dimensions. Whereas sculpting in VR feels like a game changer because I'm sculpting 3D in a 3D environment. And I'm gonna be honest, it's kind of hard to explain to you. So I implore you to make use of the free trial and see for yourself. But while it's a lot of fun to use, the question I've got to answer now is, does it have a place in my professional workflow? And so to get a better feel of what Shape Lab is really capable of, I decided to recreate an old sculpt that I'd done of Jinx back in the early days when I first started using ZBrush to see if I can improve on it using Shape Lab. So in this video, in the first part of it, I'm just going to show you around Shape Lab. We're just going to open it so you know what to expect when you give it a try for the first time yourself. And then I'll run through the Jinx project and we'll have a see how much fun it was sculpting Jinx with that. And spoiler alert, I enjoyed it that much. I bought a new headset. Sorry to interrupt the video, I did just want to quickly mention that Shape Lab is now available in the Meta Store, so you don't have to go to the website. Just get it straight from the Meta Store, which makes life a little bit easier for us Quest users. Back to the main video. So here we are in Shape Lab then, and against recommendations, what you might notice is, is that I'm not actually linked up to my computer. Now they do actually recommend that you tether yourself to your computer with a link cable because you do get better performance using a cable. However, in my experience, I haven't had any issues. So I use Steam Link, which is kind of like Air Link in that it sends the video information over via your Wi-Fi network. And and I found this works just fine, at least for me. Now, what I would recommend that you do is make sure that you turn your refresh rate all the way down. Now, I've watched a bunch of tutorials on using Airlink and Steam Link and stuff like that, and they recommend bumping up your refresh rate because when you're playing games, a higher refresh rate is a good thing. However, you don't need it for sculpting, and all it's going to do increase the amount of work you're router needs to do in order to send over you know a lot more information so turn your refresh rate right down let's get to work shall we now the first thing i want to do actually the first thing i want to show you we can change this environment so this is the environment i quite like working in but you do have a bunch over here so if i press my menu button you can see i think this is the default one it's just dark environment you kind of feel like you're Floating. We've got a few more. Grand Hall. I notice, and it does depend on what material you've got, but notice this does actually affect the lighting on the model that you're working with. So this is just our default sphere here. And right now with Grand Hall, it's quite a light environment, and that's reflected on the light shadows and light highlights on our model. But if I change this to Halloween, you can see how everything gets a little bit darker. So something worth bearing in mind is that these environments do affect your model but you know if you change your material to be a matte cap 
then it's not going to have an effect on that anyway but i like to work with the default pbr material and my favorite is the loft uh, studio you should know that you can actually change your left and right hand dominance so at the minute my left hand you know i've got this menu over here i can change symmetry i can switch between sculpt mode and edit mode essentially they're called something slightly different here but this is essentially sculpt mode this is not edit mode sorry object mode this is like object mode this is like sculpt mode but if you're left-handed you can switch this around so that your menus over here and then you do all your sculpting with your left hand which is quite nice I'm gonna switch to that because that's really confusing for me and also I can change the quality of the image that you are seeing right now so at the minute we're at a 61 degree field of view but I can switch this now it doesn't make any difference to me this but it should be making a difference to what you can see and I can also change the quality of this, but I'm just going to leave it on HD for now though. Okay, and we'll get to work with sculpting jinx. Now, the first thing you want to do before you select any sculpt is get reference. Now, unfortunately, I can't see a computer screen when I'm wearing a headset, but you can import reference with ShapeLab, which is really nice. So if I come over here and put add image, and I'm just going to go over to documents and I can add this image of Jinx that I had and I can have that image just there and I can resize it I can make it huge now to you this doesn't look huge but to me this is massive this image is now twice the size of me which is really nice but I don't want it that big we'll just put it over there so that I can refer to that and I can also add in multiple references so I'm just gonna add in the original Jinx that I sculpted a few years ago now and I can just put these over here or I could just put it right in front of my model so that my eyes are always looking at the reference which is cool I like that I like that a lot that's a better way of seeing reference than what I'm used to even though when I'm working at my desk I have my main screen here and then I have two monitors just above and I put my reference on these monitors but this you know this I can see my reference just beyond my model that I'm working on it's really nice anyway let's get on with uh, sculpting our head now shall we so I'll turn on symmetry first of all and you can see your mirrored handle there and you can see how this works so I've got my move tool now and um, I can just pull it out like that just like you could in any normal app and this is really nice however I am feeling like this head so if you've seen any of my videos before you'll know that I like to start really low poly and gradually increase the resolution as we work now if I turn on wireframe you can see that this is relatively high poly compared to what I usually do so let's delete that shall we now the way you do that we'll come into object mode and I'll just click delete here so that's gone now and we can insert a different primitive now we've got a bunch of different options here and what I like is you get a preview up here of what it's going to look like so if I change the scale on X you can see what that's going to look like and I can actually use my hand to just put that in the scene like that which is really nice but I'll just undo so I'll just press left on my thumbstick to undo if you, you can press right on your thumbstick to redo so we can change the scale on XYZ we can change the overall scale that changes them all together change the roundness it, it rounds off those edges until it's eventually a sphere like that but also of course vertex gain which is what we want to look at and I feel like all these shapes are pretty self-explanatory but you get the same options for each of these vertex count I think that is a little bit too low so I'll just make that slightly higher something like that I think should be fine now if I use my hand to put it in it's floating off on the grid which is isn't really what I want so what I'm gonna do instead is click to origin and that puts it right in the center of our world which is perfect that's exactly what i want okay so press my thumbstick down we jump into sculpt mode that's a really nice way of doing it as well you just left thumbstick up you're in object mode left thumbstick down you're in sculpt mode okay so we've got a sphere then to start working on and got my move brush selected so your, your brushes are over here docked on your left hand and i'm just gonna pull down just like I normally would now this feels a little bit too strong when it's strong like this it actually gets a little bit shaky and quite difficult to use I find and what I find is a nice way to relieve this a little bit if I come to my brush options brush settings sorry you can see we've got quite a few and if I just turn the strength down 
this kind of acts as a bit of a smoother. So now when I pull my hand down, obviously because the strength is turned down, it doesn't affect it as much and you get a much smoother motion, which is really nice, I like that. And you get your usual settings like your strength, your size, your fall off, and you've also got a, a lazy mouse, you know, your steady stroke, and different shapes as well, which is good. And some more options down here that we'll talk about later. But for now, let's carry on working on this head. Now, the really nice thing about sculpting in VR, and I'm not going to be able to show you this at the current resolution, so let me just add a bit of resolution. I'm going to press the context menu on this hand, come over to remesh. Now, this behaves just like Dynamesh or your remesh in Blender. And I'm just going to turn the resolution down. You get a really nice preview of your resolution, just like you do in Blender. You can also adjust how much it smooths out the mesh as well, which is quite nice. I'll just hit apply. I'll just turn the resolution up a little bit more than that. Okay. Now the really nice thing about sculpting in VR, you get an extra axis, which means if I want to make eye sockets in this now, I don't need to come to the side and, and sort of do this and then just check that it's working. I can just leave it where it is and just push it in like that. It's really nice. You've got to experience this for yourself to understand how nice it is to be able to do that. At the very least, give this app a try. Now, if that doesn't impress you, because, I mean, technically you can do that in ZBrush and you can do that in Blender, but can you do this? So if I was to pull out a nose, let me just turn the strength up a little bit so you can see this better. If I was to pull out a nose, right? Sure, you can do this in ZBrush, you can do this in Blender, but can you twist it around like that? Can you see what I'm doing there? Just twisting things around. It is so nice. I love that you can do that. It's so much more intuitive than anything that I'm used to. I like it a lot, as you can probably tell. So we've got some eye sockets going. Let's just smooth this all out a little bit. Now, I have you smooth a couple of times. Now, if I, I you smooth brushes here, you get all your settings that you usually would. Here's one I wasn't expecting, is pressure sensitivity. What I hadn't realized is that your controllers actually have pressure sensitivity built in. So if I turn this right up, if I just press softly, it's barely going to affect it. Whereas if I push right in, you know, we get a hard smooth. I don't know why I'm explaining pressure sensitivity to you. I'm pretty sure you already know what that, <laughs> that does. So we'll move on. But you don't need to select your smooth. So like you would in Blender, like you would in ZBrush, while you've got move selected, if you press the trigger over here on your left hand, it automatically selects your smooth brush for as long as you've got that pressed in. But you can also change that. So if I keep holding my left trigger like this and select another brush, it's gonna change it to that brush. So now, while I've got move selected, and I've just changed it to inflate, if I press my alternate brush, it's gonna inflate instead of smoothing. But I will just change that back to smooth. I'll probably always keep it on smooth, to be honest. Now I wanna define this jaw a little bit better. So I can do that by using the pinch brush. You know, you've got most of the standard sculpting brushes that you're used to in ZBrush and Blender. You know, you've got your standard brush, your clay brush, inflate, smooth, move, tentacle. I think that's a little bit like uh, your snake hook that sort of thing trim flatten pinch and then this is a bit of a, a funny one so the thing about these brushes this surprised me actually when i first started using shape lab i wasn't expecting it to have this if you look at your settings here we also have a dynamic setting and a resolution because shape lab actually has dynamic topology which i don't really understand what's going on underneath the hood but that that really impressed me that they had that in there it's not something i used i don't actually like dynamic topology i've tried it in blender before i've tried it in zbrush before i don't really like it but to have it in the app when it's compared to blender and zbrush you know it's a pretty young app uh, I was quite impressed that it had that in there and this regularize it kind of does a similar thing to what I was just doing there with the smooth in that it allows you to create the topology all over the mesh but without the smooth action if that makes sense so you know if you do use dynamic topology and you ended up with 
too high a resolution in one area, you can just get your regularized brush and you know just ease that up a little bit without affecting the underlying mesh. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, I think we should really get on with this jinx. We're not we're not making very fast progress so far. So let me just get my pinch brush. And obviously this is going to allow me to define some edges. I do have dynamic turned on, so I do just want to turn that off. As I say, I'm not really a fan. I will turn on pressure sensitivity though, and I'll just define a jawline. Now if I press the, what button is it? The B button, it's going to turn to a crease brush. So a lot of these brushes have an inverse. So inflate has the inverse, deflate, and clay, clay carve. So if I get my standard brush, you know what this is going to do already, but I'll just show you. So standard, it goes outwards. Standard inverse goes inwards. It's basically that. So if I have pinch and I turn on the inverse, that's going to be crease. And then I get a crease brush, which behaves similar to a pinch, but instead of pushing the geometry outwards, it pushes it inwards. These brushes are in Blender. There's a good chance you've used them before, but nice to know that they're in Shape Lab as well. Now, there are a few more brushes up here that I haven't mentioned. So there's your mask brush. So if I wanted to pull out a neck out of this character, I can just create a mask here. If I press invert, that inverts our mask naturally. We can blur the mask. So come over here and smooth out the edges. We can also sharpen up the edges if we wanted to. Let me just blur that again. And then I can get my move brush and of course drag out the neck like this. And what I really like about working in VR, this is something that's not gonna come across in this YouTube video, unfortunately. But while I'm working, so you can zoom in and out, right? So if you press these two little triggers at the back, you can make it really big. It doesn't feel like you're zooming in and out, actually. That's probably not the right way to describe it. I'm, I'm enlarging everything and I'm making it smaller. And on a screen, it's not the same effect. Like I say, you need to give this a try because when your model is huge like this, this is, I can't even tell you how amazing it is to look at. Let me just clear that mask. And when it's massive like this, you can be really careful. So if I get my move brush, and start moving stuff around. You can see how like, I mean, the bigger you make it, the more careful you can get as well. So if I just drag my cursor all the way across, I mean, if I did that on a tablet, like I'd make a massive mess. I mean, I have made a massive mess anyway, to be honest, but it, because it's so big, you can see how it doesn't actually affect the vertices that much. Whereas if I made it tiny and I did the same thing, you can see, you see the dramatic effect that has. It's really hard to articulate what's going on here without, if you've never tried sculpting in VR, this, I can't tell you how much you need to give this a go because it, it is a lot of fun. I mean, to make it really small like that and see it when it's like tiny, let me just remesh this, that, that neck's bothering me. So we'll, we'll just remesh it, obviously. That is a little bit too high, so let's just turn the resolution back down, something like that. Uh, there are other ways of remeshing this, by the way. So if I click on Mesh Density, you can decimate it. We can also subdivide it. We want to add resolution. And then we've got Regularize, Regularize, but Regularize, which is the same as the brush, but it just applies it all over the model. Okay, and we'll just... Carry on working a little bit, let's move this stuff out. And yeah, just working in VR is such a joy. I can't recommend it enough. You've got to at least try it. Now, I think you do get a free trial with Shape Lab. Make the most of it. Just try it out. Even if you don't end up using it, experience what it feels like to sculpt in VR because it surpassed my expectations. Now, I'm gonna be honest, when Shape Lab contacted me, I was like, I was unsure because I've used Tilt Brush in the past. I used Tilt Brush a good few years ago. And I didn't like it. I thought it was gimmicky. I mean, it's not exactly sculpting from memory. It's, it's a bit more like drawing, but in 3D. And I think it was a bit more of a tech demo, whereas this, 
This is more of something that you would implement into a professional workflow rather than Tilt Brush, which was a bit more of a tech demo. And yeah, I was just really surprised by how much nicer it was. You get a bit of haptic feedback as well while you're working. So as you press your buttons, you do get a little bit of a shake in your controller, which is nice because that's the thing as well. When I moved over from using the tablet, I was used to feeling pressure on my pen as I was working and I was a bit worried that I was going to miss that while I was working in Shape Lab and I did at first and you know when you start working in Shape Lab there is going to be an adjustment period we're literally adding a new dimension but I would so highly recommend working through that adjustment period because it is so worth it it is so much more fun to sculpt in VR and like I say if you don't believe me just give it a try get the free trial have a go for yourself there is going to be a bit of a learning curve and you do need to work through it but as long as you get past that very initial hurdle you'll start seeing how fun it is so quickly now look i know that you know that this video is sponsored and so i'm bound to say nice things about it however come and ask me later on after this video is published and i will say the same thing because i really enjoy sculpting in vr it is so much fun and like an art of like i've just said go and try it for yourself you don't have to believe me just go and have a go it'll cost you nothing to try it yourself now i pulled out that neck whereas in blender what i usually do is add a bunch of different primitives and then remesh everything together and you can do that so if i come over to my object mode and i add a new primitive so I'll add a sphere again, just check the size. We can also edit the size right here in the viewport, by the way, just using our thumbstick, which is really cool. But I want to make sure it's right in the center. So I'm just gonna click to origin like that. And it seems like our head isn't in the center. I'm not quite sure how that has happened to be honest, but we can tweak that. So if I go to my transform menu and I just reset the location to default and any rotation, yeah, we've got some rotation on there as well. And scale is fine. See, this is nice because now it is back to our world origin. So that's good. So I'll just select sphere that we have here. Oh, I've just realized that the, the scale doesn't really matter when you insert it into the world origin, does it? Well, that's fine, because we can easily scale that up using our scale gizmo over here. Or we'll just select transform so that we've got all the options there. And then I can just scale this up like that and then move it down like that, which is nice. Okay, come back into sculpt mode and that's perhaps a little bit too big so let's just scale that down a little bit move it back put it up and now we can start sculpting our torso really nice stuff now i will use this axis you can see the green y axis here uh, it's a good idea to use that because what i found when i moved over from blender is that my models would when i brought them back into blender the models would be leaning really forward i think you've got to get your eye in you've got to get used to working in vr because as i said you're, you're adding another dimension so it's gonna look different so you know just persevere with it get your eye in there and i'm sure once you've been working with it for a while your eye will improve because already if i showed you my first sculpt i mean it, it took me a long time and it didn't look very good and within a week or two you know i'd, I'd improved significantly so we've got uh, an upper toss win there and if i wanted to connect this to the head i would just select the head We'll, we'll go boolean object and menu we'll select the body select the head click join now these are all one object and we can jump to sculpt mode and remesh this just like we would in blender change the resolution click apply and now this is all one object so really nice stuff i'll just turn the resolution down a little bit really nice love that 
and then of course you can just start working on your model now one thing i do want to mention is that so one of the th first things i noticed is that there's no damn standard or draw sharp brush but you can create that yourself so if you've got a standard brush see we've got alpha options up here i literally just grabbed the damn standard alpha from the zbrush files imported it into shape lab and now i've got a damn standard brush which is really handy and just while we're here you do also get a stamp brush here so you can just add these shapes in so you know i added in and primitive booleaned it together and then remeshed it well what i could actually just do is insert so if i was going to do a lower torso we scale it on y i could just do it like that and it automatically joins onto it obviously that doesn't look very good but i think you get the idea let's say we we're going to do arms that connects to the model straight away but the reason i don't use that is that i like to so you can see how those arms are accurate i like to get them accurate away from the main model before I, I merge them in so that's why i don't use the stamp brush but you know worth knowing it's there it might be useful for yourself now before i get into focus mode and i start sculpting this model properly it, i think it is just worth showing you that you can change the material as i said let me just turn off wireframe just realize that's been on all this time uh, you get a bunch of different materials you've got your you know your dreaded matte cap red of course but you there's a lot of fun ones down here if you wanted to capture your final image right here in shape lab which you can do you know you've got a camera here you can take your a snapshot of what you're working on you can tweak the settings here which is fun and yeah look at these materials so you hit you got bronze copper realized that in this lighting you can't see it that well so let me just change the environment to something a bit brighter okay that's a little bit better steel this is cool i mean you wouldn't want to work with this just because of how they behave while you're sculpting and i'll just show you that you know it is a procedural material so it is gonna change as you're working but you can see how cool that looks and just a bunch of different mode that you want to play around with as i say give it a go experiment with it ceramic make it look like a sculpture from the louvre well i mean maybe not this exact model but <laughs> yeah really nice i like that okay so another option you've got in here is mirror and weld so if you know if i created an eyeball over here in fact let's just do that so i will insert a sphere let's just turn the vertex count up a little bit just to make sure it's properly round I'll just shove the eyeball in there like that. I do get options to move it around if I want to. But what I'm going to do is just mirror and weld. And you can change which direction it goes in. It actually gives you a preview of which direction it goes in. So if I say let's mirror this over on the x-axis, you can see that we get an arrow telling us it's going to go from right to left. If I click that, it's not going to let me because it's only on the right side, but you can change the direction in which it mirrors. I just apply. Okay, and then you can save your project, uh, export your model, all the stuff you would expect to in a menu. Now that I've run through all the different menus and whatnot, I am gonna focus in now and work on Jinx. I'll revert to giving you a voiceover of what I'm doing because I can't sculpt this whole character while speaking. It just, it doesn't work. I'm not very good at speaking while I'm sculpting, which if you've ever seen my live stream, you'll know how true that is. Okay. So now that I've given you a quick run through of what's in ShapeLab, I'll now talk to you about how I used it to create Jinx. And I'm just going to start again from the beginning. Now I started in the same way that I would in Blender, and that's by adding simple shapes to start building up a mannequin. Now as I said earlier, there's a real difference in how you perceive your model in VR. So I'm being quite careful here and moving slower than I usually would, you know, just to make sure that I'm getting this right. 
high. So I'm pretty certain that this will speed up as I improve with experience. And the idea here is to see if I can replace Splendor's Sculpt Mode with Shape Lab as a sort of proof of concept that Shape Lab can be integrated into my workflow which I'm kind of hoping that it can because as I say, Shape Lab is a lot of fun to sculpt in. But it is worth bearing in mind that Shape Lab is just a sculpting app. So things like animating or rendering and stuff like that, they're just not possible with it. So I will still need to use Blender for that. Now, I did find it a bit strange at first, like you would start in any new software, but as I started to get the hang of it, I started to better appreciate just how much better it is to be able to see and manipulate the sculpt right there in front of you. It's like it's physically in front of you. I mean, obviously it's not, it's in VR, but it feels like it is, and it makes a big difference. And again, this isn't something that I'm gonna be able to demonstrate to you over a video, so, at least give the free trial a go so that you can see what I mean. And also put some time aside to get the hang of things because as I say, it is gonna take a little bit of getting into, but it will be worth it. Now the brushes in Shape Lab do behave slightly differently to the brushes in Blender. And I found myself using Pinch and Curve, which I wouldn't normally use in Blender, but they seem to be the best way to define edges in Shape Lab. And you know, even though I don't like dynamic topology in Blender or ZBrush, I did give it a fair try in Shape Lab, but I, I still, I just couldn't get into it. What I prefer to do in my workflow is to get some shapes down, you know, not take them too far, just throw some shapes in there, sculpt on them for a bit, but then retopologize it quite early. So I'm not, I'm not sculpting the whole thing and then retopologizing it. I'm sculpting it to a level, then retopologizing it, and then I can use that clean topology to bring the sculpt to its final form. And the nice thing about this workflow is that clean topology is gonna help you get a clean mesh. So that's why I do it, and that's why I'm not keen on dynamic topology. So this is the point that I got to before exporting it out and retopologizing it in Blender. Now I don't wanna dwell too much here, but if you wanna learn how to do this I do have a tutorial link below going over the process and this took about 40 minutes in total and at this point I am thinking that I don't want hands in the final piece but I do end up sculpting these later along with the upper leg over in Shape Lab. And then once I've finished, I'd send over the low poly mesh back over to Shape Lab, where frustratingly, I did fail to record the next couple of hours. But I did, however, save it quite frequently. So here I'm just going through some of those save files to show you the progress that I made. Now normally, what I would do at this stage is have three subdivision levels. I'd have a low, medium, and high. So then when I wanna make big overall changes, I would do that on the lowest subdivision level. And then when I wanna sculpt small details, I'd do that on the high subdivision level. Then anything in between happens on the medium subdivision level, which is where I spend most of the time. Now, unfortunately, Shape Lab currently doesn't have subdivision levels. Now, I just want to interrupt the main video. I'm just editing this at the minute just to let you know that I've been chatting with Shape Lab and I can confirm that subdivision levels are in the works and they will be coming pretty soon. So that is really awesome news. So I had to proceed very carefully, only subdividing the mesh when I was completely satisfied with the lower subdivision level. And then if for whatever reason I did want to get back to a lower subdivision level, I can just send the model over to Blender and unsubdivide it using a multi-res modifier. Now normally when I sculpt eyebrows, I would use my retopology tools to build it on top of the character that I'm working on. But in this case, I just added in a primitive shape and sculpted it into position, no problem. And then I did the same for the eyelashes as well. And then I just carried on sculpting the model for a while. And as I said, this process is really fun in Shape Lab. And I thought there would be a point at which I'd need to send the model over to Blender to finalize the details. But not only was that not the case, I find that being 
so up close and personal with the model, it was actually better for getting those finer details cleaner and that I'd been missing out by using a 2D screen to sculpt with. So already I'm definitely seeing Shape Lab as a tool that I incorporate into my workflow in future. Now I did miss the eye design add-on for the eyes which technically I could have used but the amount of effort it would take to go to Blender, sort out the eyes, then bake all the textures down and bring them all back to shape lab it kind of made it not worth it but i actually like this less procedural look to the eyes and i'll probably do this a bit more in future so the next day i started creating some basic hair and just as i would in my normal workflow i created a base style using my sculpting tools which obviously i use shape lab for with the intention of using curves in blender later now I did consider sculpting the hair just to you know put shape lamp through its paces but I feel as though hair curves kind of contribute to my personal style at this point because I've used it that much and I feel like I, I get quite a bit of positive feedback from that as well. So I am approaching this with the intention of adding hair curves in Blender later. Now for the hair braids, I was feeling pretty confident that I could do it by hand in Shape Lab because you do feel like you've got a lot more control over your mesh using your VR controllers. But even in VR, this was way too fiddly and I did end up bottling it and use Curves in Blender instead. Now you might have noticed that Jinx has hands and legs now. These were also sculpted in Shape Lab while I was taking a break from sculpting the hair because I wasn't sure if they'd appear in the final render or not. And in the end, I didn't end up cropping them out, but I did sculpt them anyway, just in case. And then I send it back to Blender for another pass of retopology. And I do end up actually retopologizing the whole thing again now, but I don't retopologize it from scratch. Scratch. Instead, what I do is I imported an existing model that has good topology and wrap it around the sculpt to save a bit of time. And then it was back over to Shape Lab to sculpt the detail on the hands and the legs. Eventually, it came to the clothing and hard surface modeling. And usually for this, I would use tools in Blender to model base meshes on top to be sculpting with. However, because I'm enjoying Shape Lab so much, I decided to try and model them directly in the app. However, this did prove to be a little bit too inefficient. And so I modeled the base clothing using a combination of curves and hard surface modeling techniques. And the reason I approached it this way is just because it's a lot more efficient than sculpting. So hopefully Shape Lab will have some hard surface tools in the works for the future. And then once I'm done with that, I sent it all back over to Shape Lab to try out the painting tools over there. Now again, this isn't necessary for a lot of these objects because it is gonna be rendered in Blender anyway, and the materials aren't gonna look exactly the same when moving between Shape Lab and Blender. But as I say, I'm doing as much of this process as I can over in Shape Lab to push it through its paces and see what it's capable of. And I find painting in Shape Lab to be quite fun. It behaves in a similar way to painting in ZBrush and painting in Sculpt Mode and Blender as well, in that you paint on the vertices. And so the higher resolution of the mesh, the higher resolution of the paint. And then what I did was export these over to Blender and see just how they were looking with Blender's shaders. And they were looking a little bit different as expected. So I tweaked the colors using a human saturation and ramp nodes and then I baked the result back down to the vertices so that when I bring it back to Shape Lab I know how it's supposed to look inside Shape Lab to get it to look right in Blender if that makes sense. And since we are now back in Blender I did take the opportunity to rig the model since I do want to pause her uh, which, as I say, isn't something you can do with Shape Lab, at least not easily, since it doesn't have rigging tools, as you would expect from a purely sculpting app. Now, there's a good chance that this won't matter to you, since I know there's quite a lot of sculptors that just sculpt their characters in pose, uh, but my workflow is to sculpt the character in an A pose, 
and then pose the character later because this lets me make more use of working with symmetry. Now while I'm posing the character, I do paint the skin ways, but I don't spend too much time doing this. And what happens is, is I end up with a lot of little problems with the mesh that I need to tidy up using sculpting tools. And I would usually just do this in Blender, but as I say, I am trying to use Shape Lab as much as I can just to see what it's capable of, what it's good at, what it's best at. And so I send the model over to Shape Lab to fix those little uh, rigging and posing issues that I inevitably end up with. Now, having said that, when I got this back over to Blender again, there were a lot of little tweaks, as there always are at this stage. You know, we're getting towards the end of the project now. And I just had to do those in Blender for a couple of reasons. I mean, the first reason is the final render is going to be 2D. And so it's kind of invaluable to be able to see the shapes that are being created while looking through that final render camera. And also secondly, the deadline uh, for this project was fast approaching. And so there would just be a little bit too much friction sending all the objects to and from Shape Lab all the time. It would just take a little bit too much time at this stage of the project where, you know, it's really not necessary to be doing that anyway. And plus, I'm already convinced that Shape Lab has a place in my workflow at this point anyway. So, you know, once I'd finished tweaking everything in Blender, I then rendered it. Uh, sent it over to Photoshop as usual for the final color corrections and now before we see the final result I would really appreciate it if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel now I think it's pretty evident that I really like sculpting with Shape Lab, and you'll find a link below to try it out for yourself now don't worry I know a lot of you want to see more blender content and I know that's the reason why a lot of you are here on this channel and so I want you to know that I have no intentions of deserting blender but for me sculpting in VR is so much fun I'm gonna find that difficult to ignore and so I'm excited to see what new tools Shape Lab are going to be introducing in the near future. With all that said, I wish you good luck if you decide to have a play around with it yourself. And as ever, I'll catch you in the next video. Have fun sculpting. Peace.